And just like that, once again, it's on. What's up, good people? It's your boy, Vic XL. This is the Ride Dirty Show. And uh, Happy New Year to everybody. It is January the 8th. Man, I want to start this show off by saying happy belated birthday. Yesterday, my mother's birthday. And I want to say happy birthday to her. Hopefully, she had an awesome birthday. Man, she definitely, definitely doing it huge. I got my man Aiden in here. Might be riding shotgun with me. I'm not sure. He's been a little bashful. It's okay. It's okay. But happy birthday to my mom. I also want to say happy birthday to my my man Jay Prez, who always done music direction for me over at WRG. Um, his 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 children, his twins, turned 18 years old yesterday. So I definitely want to say happy belated birthday to them. And I also want to say happy birthday to longtime friend partner of mine, Jennifer Cameron. She also had her birthday yesterday. Now, for today, January the 8th, the only celebrity birthday that I see for January 8th is the Aura. That's right, my man R. Kelly turns 51 years old today. That's right, R. Kelly turns 51 years old. And it doesn't really seem like, it doesn't really seem like my man R. Kelly has been in the game that long, but 51. I had no idea that R. Kelly was, was 51 years old. So happy birthday to my man R. Kelly. Now, y'all know each and every episode of the Ride and Dirty Show is brought to you by the good people over at Dr. Juice Cleanse. That's right. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural juicer that promises if you follow their very, very, very simple steps, you can lose up to 25 pounds in just 10 days. Now, you tell me what type of New Year's resolution that's an awesome New Year's resolution. Losing 25 pounds in 10 days is amazing. So Dr. Juice Cleanse not only can help you lose weight, but they will also help relieve stress. It slows down the aging process. It removes all type of toxins and mucus and crap in our body that we don't need in our body. So I strongly advise everybody. I've been a drinker of Dr. Juice Cleanse for years, but I advise everyone. If you want something that's really, really good for your body, Try Dr. Juice Cleanse. Go to drjuicecleanse.com and tell them Vic XL and the good people at Riding Dirty sent you. And um, find out more about the product and hopefully you'll get you some. All right? All right. That's the way it goes down. Okay? We've got birthdays. We've got sponsors. And you know what? Now we're going to get to our guests. Because today I have, you know, Riding Dirty Radio is about... It's about people who are definitely doing their thing in the community, whether you're an author, or actor, a rapper, singer, dancer, rock. If you're in the community and you have a story to tell, then the Ride Dirty Radio Show is for you. And you know, we've been doing this thing for over 15 years, and I've had a chance to talk to all walks of life. I actually got into the music business um, one time my man Chad Wilder, he has several rock bands, but he got me into the music business. So today I have the opportunity to talk to someone who is definitely doing his thing on the rock scene. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show, guitarist Mr. Blaine Cartman. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right, did I say your last name correctly? Yes, you do. Blaine Cartman. Okay, Mr. Blaine. Let's 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 get get to the meat of it. What first of all, let's let everybody know where you're actually from. Um, I'm from Virginia, and our, our whole band is we're East Coast Virginia. You guys are out of uh, Atlanta, right? Yeah, we're definitely out of the ATL. So you're from the VA. Yeah. So I, I have some great memories of of, of going to that city. It's a great party town, a lot of fun, cool art scene. So, being from VA, um, when did you get into the rock scene? Um, I mean, God, you know, when I was a kid, I mean, you know, that was the music that, that, that I listened to. And uh, I was always looking for that thing with more energy. Like, first it was rock, then it was heavy metal, then it was punk, then it was hip hop. Energy could, could make me, you know, push me more. Uh, yeah, I guess I just I've been doing it, you know, forever now, and you know, it's just part of my life. All right. So, at what age, like, at what age did you decide to, you know, get into the, to to the music business in general? Because you're not only in a band, you play instruments. So, at what age was it? Um, 
That's what I can say. You know, I, I mean, I've played in bands almost all my life, but, uh, you know, this, this band, Stone Mop, was just, this last year we started, I mean, literally one year ago, I, I called up uh, one of my best friends in the world, Doug Masterson, a singer who's just incredible guy, incredible voice, so much power in it. And, you know, I always wanted to be in a band with him, and I called him, I said, hey, man, you doing anything? You want to put a band together? And he said, yeah, let's do it. And here we are one year later. All right, so in that one, first of all, in, comp in composing a band, putting a band together, like what are some of the key elements? Well, for this band, I really needed talented musicians. And I know every band says that, but in this case, like our songs are, are pretty hard to pull off. I mean, just from a, from a musical standpoint, we don't make it easy. We're, for everyone, I mean, it's challenging for me, the guitar parts. I know it's challenging for a singer. Our, our engineer sometimes says to me, he's like, you know, he's like, you know, your singer's human. He's like, he's not going to be able to do this, but somehow Doug always manages to. Uh, our drummer is amazing. I mean, the guy can play incredibly fast. He can play in odd time signatures. He's, it's almost like there's a metronome in his head. And our, our bass player, too, just an incredible guy, Eric Scott. He can... You know, he, he's so soulful, and, and, and he, he can get funky, he can get raw. So, yeah, really, I was just looking at the best guys I could find. I wanted guys that could really, really play. People with, you know, many years of experience. And everyone playing in this band has 20-plus years of experience. Andy Hamburger, I mean, he's played with the Platters, the Patti LaBelle. I mean, he's, he's, our, our drummer's played with, with so many different bands and famous people and, and whatnot, that he's, his chops are just impeccable. So, when putting together a band, like, do you, what's the one of the first things you think about? I know you want talented people, that's always a must, but like, how, did you, how do you say like, okay, I, I need a drummer, I need a bass player, I need a DJ, a beatbox, like, what? Oh, what, I got you. Yeah, what, like, what comes to mind, like, to me, you know what, one of my, one of my, on my bucket list, I would love to put together a um, hip-hop cover band. And I know if I had a hip-hop cover band, I definitely would want a live DJ, I would want a funky drummer, I would need a bass player, maybe a keyboard player. So when you sat down and say, you know, and you made that phone call to your best friend about forming a band, and you know what instrument you play, how did you know what other elements you want to bring in to create that Stone Mob sound? I think we had a vision of the old school, you know, Little Zeppelin, Van Halen, the, the four-piece band. Like, we knew we wanted, you know, I wanted a, a singer that was just singing. I, I didn't want him up there playing guitar, too. I wanted him totally dedicated to the crowd. I mean, the crowd loves it when the singer, there's nothing between them and him, because ultimately that's who they touch with. You know, it's, no one goes home after a show singing the guitar solo. You know, they go home thinking about the, the singer. You need your front man to be out front. So, uh, so I knew I didn't want someone else. I mean, Doug can play guitar. He's actually quite good. But we knew we wanted him to just hold the microphone and get in the audience's face and, and you know, really connect with them. And then I thought, you know, I, I, I just wanted, I knew I, I could handle it on guitar. I just wanted that one guitar sound, you know, raw, nothing, no rhythm guitar. I mean... I didn't feel I really needed that. The sound would be thick enough. And then I knew, of course, I need bass. I mean, everything needs bass. <laughs> I don't care what kind of music it is, even classical music. I mean, they get those cellos in there. You know, you, you must have bass. That's, that's what the ear hatches onto. And then, of course, drums. I, you know, what, what rock band wouldn't have a, a, a thundering rhythm section? So I didn't think we needed keyboards. You know, I, I, I knew the kind of sound we were going for. I knew it was going to be this really sort of raw, you know, in-your-face, high energy, one guitar, one bass, one drum, one singer. And I feel like that's, that'll, you know, do enough to create the sound we wanted. Okay. That's, that's dope. So, actually, how, you, you play guitar, correct? Yes, sir. All right. And your best friend plays what instrument? He sings. But Doug Masterson, I mean, he's, like I said, really incredible singer. When, when you hear the notes he can hit, his voice can go so high and so low, and, and just there's so much, he, I don't know how he gets that much air <laughs> inside his chest that he can blow out those notes. And I mean, the guy could probably sing opera if he wanted to. He just prefers doing rock and roll. But uh, he can play guitar. 
So, you know, sometimes we'll get together and, you know, we've got some ideas, some chords or whatever. But, yeah, he, he basically sings. And then, like I said, Andy Hamburger plays drums for us, and Eric Scott is our bass player. Eric Scott, interestingly enough, has his own band, which is a soul sort of funk band that he plays in. And uh, it's getting a lot of acclaim. He's about to release a CD, so he's, he's doing quite well for himself. All right. Now, once you guys form this band, because I know one of the, I tell people all the time, you can never be good at anything if you don't practice. You got to practice, 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 practice. How hard, how hard was it getting the band together, then coming up with a practice time and coming up with a practice space? Uh, let me tell you, that's, that is one of the true challenges. And, and I find it harder, you know, I used to play in sort of a, a more hip-hop band, you know, where we did beats and, and whatever. And there, you just need the computer and a quiet room, you know, and, and, until you go live. But I'm saying when you're recording this stuff, a lot of times you can do it with just... But when you're in a rock band, you do need a lot of space. Uh, fortunately, our drummer, you know, he's, he's got a house, so there's a bass go in and rock out and he's got the equipment uh, and then you know a lot of our work is just done in the studio okay um, what's the but you know we're, we're all professionals everyone's good enough but you know we know the show's coming up we all learn the songs on our own then we get together right before the show and have a practice or two if we're lucky and then go out there and kill it I mean that's you know that's, that's part of the job like we, we need to be able to learn the songs on our own and we do all right, tell me a little bit about the name Stone Mob. How did that name come about? You know, I still don't know. <laughs> it's, it was Doug's idea. It was literally right after I said, hey, we should put a band together. I go, he goes, yeah, great. I go, we need a good name. He said, how about Stone Mob? I said, hey, catchy. I like it. Let's do it. He said, perfect. So, <laughs> so it was his idea, and uh, I thought it was a cool name. It just has a, uh, you know, I mean, I like the idea that says Stone because we're a rock band, you know, Stone, Boulder, Rock. Like it's got a rock feel to it. Mob, I like that it's got a business feel to it. You know, and we're a loyal, tight-knit bunch. I mean, we're not just a band. We're also great friends, all of us. So, you know, we're, we're loyal to each other. We're, we're tight with each other. We, and we don't need to BS with each other. We always tell the truth. So, it's, uh, and you know, if we have a problem, we hash it out and, you know, we move on. So it is kind of like being in the mob. And, and you're not allowed to leave. Anyone leaves my band, I'll kill them. <laughs> <laughs> in for life. You're in for life, buddy. Exactly. In for life. <laughs> blood in, blood out. <laughs> so, no, but they're, they're a great bunch of guys. And I don't know. It's just Doug's idea for a name, but it was catchy. And, you know, it stuck. All right. So having this band, because I know in Atlanta, there are so many places for independent rock groups to play. Um, what's it like in Virginia? Like, are there a lot of avenues for you guys to play? Yes, but not as much as we would like. I mean, the good thing is we're in an area that includes Washington, D.C. We're very close. We're close to Virginia Beach and Richmond. So when you, if you're willing to travel a little bit, then all of a sudden there's more clubs to play. But, uh, you know, some, some not as much as others. And... And because we're a hard rock band, that also limits our audience a little bit. You know, some of the clubs, like there was one club we were, who I won't mention the name because I don't want to get sued, but we were very excited to play there. We worked out that we were going to be opening up for Cannabis Corpse, which is a, a really big metal band. And then they got scared that maybe people would be moshing or slam dancing and mess up their club, and they basically canceled the show on us. Now, fortunately, we're still playing with Cannabis Corpse. We're going to open for them in uh, January 24th at the Mason Inn in D.C. So we're very excited about that. But, yeah, some clubs are a little hesitant when it comes to the harder rock and roll. Yeah, I, 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 I've been told. It's also like that for hip-hop. It's also like that for hip-hop. It is. It is. It's, it's always the, the fringe music, the high-energy music, you know, the music that really brings the believers. Because people that are out there listening to pop, it's so easy. But, you know, for people who are looking for the real hip-hop, the real rock, we got to dig a little deeper. You know, it's, it's not readily on the radio, and, and we, we have to look for it. So they're, they're real fans, and real fans at shows are going to get a little crazy in it. All right, so, Blaine, i got to ask you, first of all, i got to ask two, uh, two questions. Number one, these names, your lead vocalist, Earth Dog. Well, that's because 
Doug grew up in, in kind of a, a rougher neighborhood, and, and uh, he's always been the guy that, you know, he'll step to it. Whatever it is, he's like a pit bull. You know, he, he, he's got this incredible energy about him. He should probably on dr- be on drugs to calm him down, but he's not. <laughs> I'm always saying that in front because I know Doug's going to be listening. <laughs> but, uh, no, he's just, the guy's got so much energy, and he's ferocious. I mean, when it comes to doing, getting it done. And, uh, and he's, he's strong as, as anything. I mean, I've seen that guy lift up carpets over his head that, like, you know, I couldn't even move with three of my friends. So he's... Yeah, we call him we call him the Earth Dog because he's just a, a force to be reckoned with. All right, now I gotta ask you, Shred Master General. <laughs> That's my friends just started calling him. Actually, my friend Will David, who uh, he's a uh, he's a great guy. We call him Mr. Creative. He's he mixes beats. He's our photographer. He was our bass player, but now he, he wants to focus more on his passions, which is photography and and you know beats and, and hip hop music and whatnot. And uh, he just called one time I was playing in the studio. He was watching it. When I finished the solo, he was like, Houston, we have shredded. And then he just started calling me Shredmaster General, and my other friends started calling me that too. And even if I told them to stop, I don't think they would. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you prefer, the stage or the studio? Oh, God, of course the stage. There's nothing like the stage, you know. You, that's when you really connect. The, the studio is almost like the homework you do to get on stage. You know, it's like we, we work it out in the studio, we grind it out, we get that song, and then you can really go home and now you really mastered it by the time you played at the studio. And now you practice it again and again and again. By the time you get on stage, that's when, you, you know, you can jump around and, and look at girls and, <laughs> you know, and just have a lot of fun. I, I love being on the stage. And that, that energy, when, when the crowd's loving it and, and you're loving it back to them, there's, it's, there's nothing like that. I mean, it's, it's the greatest feeling in the world. All right, now, not only, Blaine, are you a guitarist and you write songs, but as I visited your website and read more about you, you are a film producer, you are a director, actor, author, you have your Ph.D. in psychology, I mean, philosophy. Um, you're like a jack of all trades. Like, how did all this come about? <laughs> I, you know, it's a good question. I guess I just... I've, I've led a pretty lucky life, you know. Um, my uh, for the PhD of philosophy, my parents always pushed me for education, and anytime I was between jobs, they were like, "Go back to school," you know. They were they were very generous and very lucky that they, you know, helped me to, you know, just really improve myself that way. Uh, as far as writing, uh, being an author, my PhD thesis, I spent uh, a year in China doing my field research on a minority crime in China. We always think of minority crime in America, right? But it's, it happens everywhere. And, and, you know, usually it's the minority being criminalized by the state. It's not as much their fault as the news would like to make it so. So I was, I was talking about all of that, what goes on in China, and, uh, and that just it had ended up becoming a book. That's cool. Um, how, so, how, are you, and, how, how, how were your books received? Uh, it was it was really well received. I mean, it, it sold well. You know, I got a lot of uh, nice press about it. I think some ex girlfriend of mine was the only one who gave me like a one star review. <laughs> I was looking at it. It was like it finished with like a review like in short, I hate you, Blaine Coleman. I was like, okay, this isn't a real review. <laughs> this is someone who knows me and just doesn't like me. But uh, no, in general, the, the book was very well received, and interestingly enough, it was even well received by the Chinese government. I mean, there were Chinese government officials who, you know, tra- obviously got translated to Chinese. I thought it would get banned because I, you know, kind of criticized the government and some of their policies. But actually, they uh, they were pretty receptive to some of the things I said. They were like, yeah, maybe we do need, you know, maybe more the the liberal-minded uh, government officials. They seemed to think it was a good idea. So, yeah, it was pretty well received. All right, so. Tell me, you know, tell the people more about Stone Mob and how to find you guys, because you know we live in a viral world today. You can't do anything without having social media. So let the people know where to find you, because I also realize you guys have a CD. That's that's true. Although our CD, we're not selling it just yet. Um, we, we're, we're planning on having a release party and and doing all that. But uh, but you can definitely go to StoneMobRising.com, 
StoneMobRising.com is a, you know, a website. You, you can see videos on there, pictures, most of our press we put up there. Uh, and you can, then you can just always Google search us. You can look for me in a Guitar World magazine. I write a, a monthly sort of, you know, shredding lesson. Like just, you know, give away some of my secrets, some of my, some of my looks, how I play them, what I do. Uh, and uh, if you just, yeah, if you just Google search us, you'll find us. We're on Facebook. I mean, you know, we'd love it if you come and like our Facebook page. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Stone Mob Rising. I'm on Instagram at Stone Mob Rock. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely out there. If you, if you Google Stone Mob, you'll, you'll find us. And especially YouTube us, because that's where you get to hear the music. You know, and who cares about everything else? I mean, really, it's all about the music. And you get on YouTube, you can see some funny videos. You can... You can hear some, some great music, and yeah, that's, that's really the best place to look for us. All right, I got to ask, do you have any groupie tales? <laughs> not, not, not any that I want to share publicly. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's great getting uh, attention, but I'll, I'll tell you, the, the best feeling in the world is when we finish playing a show and come off stage and someone you've never met before comes up to you and, and they want to shake your hand and they're like, man, that was great. That's, nothing feels better than that. I mean, it's not because of the, the ego, like, you know, oh, you know, that's right, we're so out. It's awesome. It, it just feels good because we, we love making this music and, and it really touches us. And, and we want to connect with people with it. And, and when we do, when I could see, like, somebody had a great night because they were jamming to our band, that, that means I had an even better night. I can dig it, I can dig it. Tell me a little bit about this record we're about to play called Murder Town. Okay, so maybe a few years ago, I went to Tombstone, Arizona. And uh, outside Tombstone is Booth Hill, the graveyard, where like a lot of famous, you know, gunfighters were buried. And uh, one of the gravestones said on it, Here lies Lester Moore, four slugs from a forty-four, no less, no more. And I thought, wow, what a great epitaph. I mean, this guy was killed and he wrote it wrong. I thought, those would make great lyrics for a song. So then I, you know, had this kind of jangly, western-sounding guitar lick, which I thought was, you know, had sort of a cowboy sound to it and just kind of started putting together the lyrics about Wide Earth and all that. And, uh, you know, if you go on YouTube and check out Murder Town, we've got a video where we actually have a whole cowboy shootout. And, uh... You know, Doug, he's, he's not just a great singer and a talented guy, he's also a great tradesman. And he actually built the set for, he turned my garage into a saloon. If you look at that video, it looks as good as almost anything you'll see on TV or in a, in a Hollywood movie. I mean, it's, it really looks authentic. And we, you know, have like a poker game and a shootout, and then it goes out into the woods, and there's a massive shootout. And we, we used CGI and, and also had some real-time blood effects and uh, had a great crew on it and... Yeah, it's, it's a cool video. If you get a chance, definitely check it out. If, if, if you like watching Guns, you know what it is? It's the Hateful Eight, but we cut through the three hours of talking and get right to the shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's really dope. That's really dope. What was, I mean, because, you know, videos are so essential having that visual. What was it like shooting that video, and how has that helped you guys' career? I think the videos have been golden for us. I mean, we've got, our last video got like 103,000 views on YouTube, which, okay, that's not, you know, compared to like, a, you know, Justin Bieber or something a hell of a lot, but for us, that's, you know, that's the size of a small city has seen our, our video. That, that means the world to us. Um, the, we always try to make our videos fun. I mean, we, we have this video guaranteed where we get like this spray that supposedly makes us, uh, you know, irresistible to women. So it, it shows all the misadventures we're having, you know, getting in trouble with their boyfriends. And, uh, and uh, Doug had this great idea for that video where he, he, again, by the way, designed all the props and everything for that video. Did an awesome job. But uh, one of the things he wanted to do was get me in the pool uh, playing guitar underwater. And uh, it was dangerous because, you know, it, I couldn't hold my breath that long. And we, uh, you know, for the whole guitar song, we had to fill my swimsuit with rocks to lay me down. And I'm looking at everyone like, listen, if I start drowning, you, you mothers better save me. <laughs> so, uh, Murder Town, that was a really amazing video to film, a lot of fun. Um, you know, getting together all the, the cowboy hats and cowboy boots and outfits was a real, was a real chore. You know, it, it's not easy making the period piece on a budget. 
And, uh, and then the other thing is it was a very cold day when we filmed, so everyone's outside freezing, you know, having to shoot out in the woods, which, you know, you get 30 seconds of footage, but it takes us like three hours to film that. So. All right, so I'm going to tell you what. I want you to introduce Murder Town, but before you introduce Murder Town, I want to let everybody know who's listening to the show, who might go back and listen to the show via RyanDirtyRadio.com, RFG, Spreaker, SoundCloud, any other streaming formats where we stream these interviews, make sure you go to RyanDirtyRadio.com and check out Murder Town, the video, because it's in the feature box right now. So you can check it out right now or check it out after you listen to the record. So Mr. Blaine, do me one huge favor and... Before you do introduce the show, I, this, the video and the song, I do want to tell you it has been a pleasure to talk to you. Keep rocking out, um, continued success, and as things progress, please keep me informed. Absolutely, hey, the pleasure's been all mine, man. This has been a uh, really fun talking to you. All right. Hey, shout out to the ATL. You guys keep partying. All right, now introduce the record for me. All right, this is Stone Mob's Murder Town. Yippee ki yay! Yippee ki yay, bitches! Get a chance, check them out. Your boy Vic XL, Ryan Dirty, we gone.